on expressive uh, technology and uh, girls being involved in technology has been a major discussion over the last couple of years and rightfully so uh, we are all looking at equality for both genders when it comes to some sectors that have been male dominated mostly and so opportunities like this given a give a chance to to young ladies to also get into the world of tech and also you know create something in technology in the future which i'm really excited about so uh, today we speak about this, the team the team steam camp which is happening um soon that's on begins september 5 and uh, my guest this morning is dr sujith jaya prakash good morning to you right. I got it right. I got it right. Yeah. Jaya Prakash. I learned that all night. I was like, what's this name pronounced like? You should so, start eating chapati, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what's your chapati? Is Indian food? Well, it's 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 not a staple food for me. I come from the southern part of India, so we okay. eat rice a lot. Oh, you eat rice a lot. Yeah. Well, I have uh, some some great friends in India, so oh, that's I know. I love. I love India. I hear from my friends in Delhi on the weekends, you know. Wow. Just hear from them on it, video calls and all of that. It would surprise you. I come from a place which is a coastal place. So where we get palm wine, we get coconut and we, I mean, it's, it's similar what, to Ghana. Palm, palm wine? Palm wine. We have cassava. We have, is uh, it? our staple food is cassava, shito and all that too. Really? Fish, yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, like literally a Ghanaian. Kind of. That's why I'm here for the last 13 years without complaining. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been there for the last 13 years, yeah. that's interesting. Let me talk about you a little. You're a doctor yes. in what? Technology? Yes. So I've uh, done my PhD in computer science and okay. uh, my special focus is on education data mining. Okay. So I try to work on algorithms that would predict the academic progression of students in the tertiary education system. Okay. Yeah. The algorithms that can predict the progress of students. Yeah, based on their... Sounds like a whole changes, new topic to me. Can, can we spend some five minutes on this? Yeah. How do these algorithms look like? What do they do for a tertiary education? So machine learning is all about um, trying to infer patterns from the data you provide. And then it predicts what is going to come based on what it has trained on. Right. So, for example, when you buy a new Android phone... Um, your phone doesn't know Chi, your phone doesn't know English, mm -hmm. but after a few months, you will say that when you type hi, it can say hello, how are you, or it can start suggesting you the next term or the next word. Okay. It's the same thing in Chi as well. So if you are frequently typing in Chi, so it can automatically predict the next text you are going to say. Mm. How does this happen? Because the, the machine starts learning by itself from the input you are providing and it starts predicting what's going to be the next one. So similarly, I what I tried to do was like, I picked up the um, JHS, SHS grades of students and uh, their skill set and where they uh, are performing well. And based on that, it, it predicts their academic progression, whether they fall under the first class, second class or third class. So you can predict it when wow. they're in level 200. And eventually what happens is the institutions can start focusing more on how to, uh, how to give additional training on some of the courses mm. so that the student who who may fall under third class can move to the second class upper or second class or first class. That's, that's interesting. Is, yeah. is this in use already? Uh, many developed countries are already using this. I mean in Ghana because in Ghana, no. I mean in Ghana you find everybody being bundled up in one course. People yes. take yes. people take you know yes. six seven courses <laughs> at a go. No real specialities. Exactly. By the time they, it's like a, it's, the system is too general. That's why I ask it's, you this today. It's it's quite unfortunate yes. in this part of the world we don't make use of data. I mean, we don't handle data very well. I mean, not many universities are having ERP systems and all that which can. Um, take care of large amount of data. So, however, these things are coming into play. So, I, I know many universities have started using a lot of softwares to maintain student data and trying to do these uh, research works. Um, so, I'm, I'm sure that in days to come, we'll see Ghana is also progressing to this. Now that's, that should be interesting. I'll be interested in that uh, that uh, data for. For, for my children because you yeah, know exactly. you like to see you like everywhere. to see the progression yeah what they are interested in i mean aside of the ob observations data will be yeah today people key. talk about anticipatory algorithm which um, amazon tried to come out so amazon anticipates what products you're going to buy next one month 
Is it? And based on that, yeah, in developed countries, so you will <laughs> see um, some of the places, some of the Amazon shops, they pre-order some of the things and then keep it there in the stock because they anticipate that these are some of the orders which is which are going to come in 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 a month or two. Are they specific to the human being? Uh, yeah. Can they say? Being. Can they probably say? Suggest is going to buy a, a bunch of toilet roll. In, can do that in, in they two can weeks. do that as long as ah. they have been tracking your uh, patterns of buying items so obviously they can predict every month you buy four cartons of so and so they can predict that this they month also that. you are going to buy it so ah. they'll come and keep a stock of it so that you don't wait for the products to come to your house so within like if you order today by close of today you will get these orders because they're already ready for you exactly that increases and customer satisfaction that's right? interesting yeah so and uh, that confirms that the, <laughs> the big companies are watching all of us yeah a lot AI is, AI is <laughs> changing the whole they're the world. first guys to confirm that they're watching us for <laughs> so they're watching every move of us yeah that's true that's true yeah oh, wow, that breaks my heart the rest of my guests will say oh not really you know no. but you say yeah they are Watching every move. Yeah. Let's talk about Open Labs. Exactly. When did Open Labs begin and what does it do? Okay, so Open Labs is basically a technology training and consultancy organization. Um, our vision is to produce tech talents who can develop innovative solutions that can address uh, indigenous problems. Mm. Um, as a technology training institution, we are also striving to um, bridge the gap of uh, bringing women into tech. Okay. That's something we are talking today, mm. how we can address this gender gap in technology. Uh, so Open Labs started in the year 1999. So many of them, they don't know Open Labs as a brand, but okay. people know NIIT Ghana. Oh, so we oh. came up with this franchise. NIIT, NIIT is now Open Labs. Is now Open Labs. NIIT is very well known. Very well it's known. like a legendary <laughs> computer school. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been 20 years. Um, so we have graduated over 100,000 students in mm. software development, infrastructure management, networking, graphic design, and so on. So uh, we have currently five campuses in Ghana. Apart from that, we are also uh, located in Liberia and Sierra Leone as well. Mm. So basically, Open Labs. So the name has changed across. Yeah, the name has changed as across. Open Labs. There's uh, no more NIIT. There is a reason behind this. So 2020, post COVID, everybody have seen uh, a massive transformation in the way technology um, uh, technology programs are offered across. Like Coursera came into existence, edX came into existence. So at that point of time, we were running this franchisee brand called NIIT Ghana. Um, so it was basically we. We brought these courses from NIIT India and then we were offering it here. Okay. But at that point of time, we understood the importance of offering hyper-localized programs um, that, that addresses uh, the, the problems to solve, uh, I mean, to solve indigenous problems. Okay. So we wanted to teach students uh, about what's happening in Ghana. We wanted to take industry problems, uh, the local industry problems, try to uh, provide them technological solutions. So we thought back and discussed why don't we come up with hyper-localized contents and hyper-localized courses which are focusing on local problems. That's where we formed a tech team over here. So for this, we had to part ways with NIIT India uh, because mm. when you are under a franchisee partnership, you can only offer the courses what they are offering. So okay. we started this and then the okay. change and that, that had So that Open Labs has now, now has localized no, exactly. solutions, so, and, solutions and, and training for trainings. What, what are some of this some of these courses that are you know that are localized uh, I mean technology is global but then when you are teach the way you teach it, the oh, way okay. you uh, for example I can teach data analytics by picking up problems which the Ghanaian companies are facing. So probably I can go to a microfinance company here, I can t pick up their data, and then I can apply data analytics to it, and then I can find solutions in for patterns and stuff. Mm. So this is what we uh, thought of uh, bringing on board. So based on that, we started uh, developing our coursewares and stuff. Okay. So, um, yeah, coming back to what we discussed, so Open Labs, uh, since 2020, we are named, uh, we are called as Open Labs Ghana. Okay. And uh, currently we have five campuses. One is in Tema, Accra, Kumasi, Tema, and Tamale. Okay. So uh, our rural area focuses on basically uh, Kumasi and Tamale. Uh, so that's where we address the 
rural community, right? So, okay. Um, apart from this, as I said, we also have campus in Liberia and Sierra Leone. Uh, we are actually backed by Eureka Africa Education Group that's based in Dubai. Okay. And uh, um, many of them don't know that uh, basically Blue Crest is a shootout of uh, NIIT. So 2000... Blue Crest is the shootout, is a shootout of, of NIIT, NIIT Ghana. The Blue, Blue Crest. The, Blue Crest University College. The university. Yeah. It's from NIIT? Yeah. So basically oh. in 2010, uh, we wanted to provide an upgrade path to some of our graduates. So till then, we were offering just two-year diploma programs. And then uh, 2010, you know, many of them wanted to go to university. So we... We partnered with uh, University of Education, Vineba. We got mm. affiliated to them, okay. and we launched these two uh, top-up level degree programs uh, in BSEIT. So that actually gave um, a big push for our graduates, NIIT graduates, to pursue a career in um, tertiary education in IT. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So by, the, so, so, by the way, NIIT is still a school, it's just known as... It's, it's still a school. It's still a it's school. Known as uh, an institution that offers certificate and diploma in okay. higher and technologies. Okay, let's talk about the, the team STEM program. Yeah. yeah you, you, your organization wants to involve a lot of girls in, in the world of technology. But interesting, are we from the notes? We have been looking at stuff like techno, um, photography and you know, all of this video editing and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Someone will sit back and think, oh, but this photography is, is not, a, uh, it's, it's not technology. Explain to me why you, you, you chose some of, some of these uh, courses as, as part of the training. Um, I've always been saying this everywhere. So technology is no more an isolated field. It converges with every aspect of business we do today. Mm. So um, if you think that you're a media person, why you want to learn technology, mm. then I would say that you are not futuristic enough. Ooh. Because today... Um, we all know that there is a parallel universe being created, a digital universe or a meta metaverse, that's what they call it. Okay. So it is, um, it is said that in 10 years' time, you everyone will find their digital twin mm -hmm. in this metaverse. So companies have... Everyone started, will find their digital twin? Digital twin. That's how <laughs> technology For is example, <laughs> what, what would be my digital twin? What does that mean? Your avatar. So there is this metaverse. So people have ah. started buying plots there. Companies are putting up their... Is that outlets. real? Is that a real thing? It's real. This it's metaverse thing. I struggle to understand it. It's happening. <laughs> people are buying land and houses. <laughs> it's somewhere we do, where we cannot actually live. That just so blows my you, mind. You never know. I mean, it's... it's uh, All these are happening, basically. Okay. So, graphics or whatever we call today art, even fashion. Mm. Um, so, all these things are actually backed by this technology in these days, mm -hmm. right? So um, it, is, it is important that everyone embraces technology in every uh, field of their business and try to make use of it, a good use of it, mm -hmm. so that they can, uh, they can improve their business to the next level. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's so what we're trying to do. This is a STAMA STEM camp. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a program scholarship, actually. So the people yes. who qualify for this just get a, a full... A full uh, scholarship on this. Exactly. Uh, this is by Tomorrow Breed and Open Labs and other affiliates as well. Uh, courses including photography, cinematography, programming, data analytics, and also techniques. That's that's interesting. Yes. You. We know why you 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 already want women to be a young girls to be a part of the system, and the age gaps. Uh, the the age range is from thirteen to seventeen years. Yeah. Uh, that's that's young. Why did you so, why did you want to go with that particular no, thing? Before just... going to that, I would like to talk about our partner, Tomorrow Breed. So okay. basically they are an innovation and uh, growth consultancy for early stage startups. Mm. So apart from that, their keen interest is in educating young people on STEM education. Mm. Um, we believe that the the vision of Open Labs and Tomorrow Breed aligns because uh, we both are trying to promote uh, STEM education, the reason being STEM is nothing but a focus on critical thinking, problem-solving abilities, and promoting innovation. Mm -hmm. And this is key in today's, in today's world. Mm -hmm. We wanted um, the African youth to come up with innovative solutions, as I told you earlier. They want to come up with innovative solutions that can address uh, our indigenous problems. Um, 
and today we are talking about web 3.0 um, you know how these e-commerce platforms are people are talking about digital currencies and uh, tomorrow breed and open labs we sat together and thought what programs we can offer to these students so that they will be able to uh, create solutions for for the problems we are going to foresee in the future so uh, one thing we came up with is html 5.0 so this is a basic program, but then it is much important uh, for the youngsters to learn. Or what? What 5.0? HTML 5.0. Yeah, is that what you say? It's, it's a, that a basically that a coding uh, program? front end programming, and okay. uh, uh, it's a programming language, hypertext okay. markup language. They say, Aha. and it has different versions. So 5.0 basically it helps them to go into uh, Web 3.0, and. <laughs> So uh, that is one, and the second one is data analytics. Yes. That is also key today. So people yes. should understand how to play around with data, how to uh, come up with insights using the data they got, whether be it in agri sector, be it in mining sector, be it in any sector. You get large amount of data today, and what insight you are trying to come up with it is more important for the business decisions. Yes. So we wanted to train people on uh, data analytics. And mm -hmm. the third one is definitely social media marketing and content development, which is also... That's key, key today. Exactly. That's really key yeah. today, yes. <laughs> um, then we thought who would be our target audience. Uh, another aligned vision for both these organizations is that uh, addressing the uh, gender the gaps, uh, gaps okay. in technology. So we wanted to train this young female on these technologies so that um, we can address this gap as much as we can. So uh, there are three things we are trying to achieve with this. One is definitely to offer partial and full scholarships to the selected women okay. to take up these three courses. Okay. Two is to reach out to the second cycle schools and uh, train uh, students on these uh, technologies. As and a secondary school? Yes, okay. as secondary schools. Three is also to reach out to corporates because uh, we both are focusing on B2B as well as B2C businesses. So B2B when it comes to, uh, I mean, basically upskilling our employees. You know, today there are a lot of banking systems over here, microfinance and, every, uh, and a lot of other institutions are here. How they can embrace uh, technology. Uh, for example, uh, microfinances, they give out loans to people. But they should be able to predict whether this person can pay back the loan or not. Is that possible? Of, of course. Can I also be able to predict whether, you know, for, for not, not, not to put you in a, 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 a no, no, no. Of, but can I also predict whether this, this schemes that have been paying people money and that have, have gone AWOL, could, would I be able to predict whether they actually were able to pay me the monies they promised? <laughs> as long as you have their data, you can. <laughs> because if I put my money in in in, in, a, uh, in a microfinance or somewhere, something, they will be paid. And they promise me ten percent, and everybody rushes there. Can I predict whether this this ten percent uh, no, will no, come? As, as long as you have their historical data, yes, of course you can. You, you can uh, predict. You understand. I mean, wow. there are a lot of Ghanaians. Uh, Ghanaians really needed this data a, a few years ago. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you if you go to some of the uh, sites, um, you will you'll get a lot of insurance company data for free. Uh, for free, you can download it. You can start learning. Mm. In Ghana, yes, it has to come. It will come. So uh, so these are the three things we are trying to focus on now, along mm. with tomorrow breed. Uh, we are um, we are quite grateful for this uh, for this because uh, this is something uh, we wanted to uh, do for last couple of years but okay. when tomorrow break came on board uh, you couldn't say no because this is what we we you, were you, you mean what you yeah, wanted we to do on, okay yeah. if we wanted to do at age of 17 uh, 13 to 17 that yeah. addresses the fact that you said it was a second cycle exactly because cycle some of these courses needs a better understanding of the language as well as the mathematics so when okay. i say data analytics obviously students should know mathematics so it's a four week training program yeah it's a month that's a month. So within those four weeks, the, because the girls would have gotten a, a, a exactly. fair understanding. So from three students, once they graduate, they have to wait for their, um, uh, what do you call their results, as well as to get admission into the uh, university. Yeah. So we wanted to make use of that time. They can use that one month time period to go on an intense training, uh, understand these technologies. And whichever field, they, I mean, they can become a journalist or they can become a, a doctor. 
but it is important that they understand these technologies so that they can make use of it before they even go to the university definitely yeah. i think it's a it's a good time to exactly to fix that. a tech course in between secondary school and as the, the saying goes catch them young yeah uh, and, and, they, and they'll be with technology forever that's interesting stuff so you're currently taking applications uh from 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 the students from the students how yeah. do the students apply to the stem program uh so we will be doing a call for very shortly so uh it, it should start from the 1st of september okay um there will be scholarships announced in partnership with moro breed people can make use of it okay yeah. okay so from 1st september if if you're watching and you're you're female between 13 and 17 years old you want to be a part of some technology training of course you have to uh reach out to to open labs on this program but how do people reach out to you is there a contact so there's record? a website openlabs.edu.gh that's okay. our official website openlabs.edu.gh yeah that's apart the... from that uh you, you can reach out to all of our social media platforms mm. uh the phone number they can reach out to let me Oh uh, yeah, just 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 grab the phone number a little quick because a lot of people just like to call instead of <laughs> you know. So it's uh, 057 okay 434 okay 1755. Okay. okay, you mention it again. 057 434 1755. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So uh this is uh the teen STEM program. It's actually a camp one month by Open Labs and uh STEM it's a it's a it's a it's a full scholarship uh for, it for depends so it's a full or partial scholarship full or partial scholarship yeah, it depends on the uh, uh small test we we are going to conduct so, yeah. so how many how many how many girls can you can you take into this program at, at a go so um one good thing with open labs is all of our campuses are uh, having computers uh, eight, uh one student with one computer so okay. um if you talk about campus in Accra, it can accommodate 150 students at a go. Okay, okay. So about 150 girls coming here past this training at a go. In one campus. In one campus. That's so is this going to happen in, on all, all of the, the campuses? campuses? Yeah. Oh wow, it's going to happen in Kumasi, Tamale, Tema, so all yeah, of those. Right, yeah. The hells I think it was just going to be there. Accra no, no, campus. we just wanted to spread it as much as we can. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. That's a really incredible, really incredible initiative, and uh, really making time for the young ladies to be a part of technology, data analytics, cinematography, social media skills, which is really important in t yeah. today's age. And of course, photography there. I think it's a joint I, responsibility. I'm interested in that class, uh, photography. You should, you should. <laughs> photography. You said it's a joint responsibility between, between you and... Uh, no, like promoting STEM is a joint responsibility. You as a media person, I as an educator or public organization, public and private organizations, mm -hmm. Everybody should join together to support these initiatives to make sure that our young people understand the importance of STEM. Mm, mm, mm. And then they, so as a study says that only 25% or less than 25% of the students in Africa go for STEM-based courses. Mm. That's, that's a bit alarming because... Uh, only 25%. Less than 25%. Okay. So it is important that we make these students understand the importance of STEM. What mm. science is, what technology is, what engineering is, what mathematics is, and everything, right? Mm. And today, what's arts is. Mm. And uh, make sure they, they, they try to come out uh, with solutions mm. which can solve our problems. Absolutely. Yeah. So so coming, I take that coming from you, a doctor of technology. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're into artificial intelligence. Yes. I have a few questions there. Yes. Uh, that's, that's, Don't should, put me into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> should, you know, every every time people people speak about AI, a, a lot of people are a, a lot of uncomfortable. It, it should should the ordinary person be wary about about uh, AI taking over their their own livelihoods, or they should rather be happy about AI complementing their, they their livelihoods? They should be happy. They should be happy that AI is complementing their lives. Uh, the reason being, as I said. As long as you start embracing technology for good, I mean, definitely you are going to um, improve your your life, right? So mm. um, just start learning technology, start embracing. I hear a lot of these things. Uh, you know, a lot of those news articles that oh, by twenty twenty something, robots will take over this sector of the economy fully. You hear what you hear all of that, and you do people work in those sectors, they they get a little wary about. 
uh disruption disruption is everywhere so uh, if you talk about media if you talk about education when yeah. uh, when coursera came up every other education institution were taken back by thinking that now uh, higher education is going to change but we, we are still there we are trying to uh, see how we can it's not a competition it's a competition right so okay. we are, we all are trying to see how we can collaborate and uh, live in the same space mm. so it's the same thing mm. in every field you will see a disruption but as long as you understand it and you start embracing it you live with it yeah mm. Mm. okay bye well, just uh, uh just just hang with me today i'm hanging with me the whole day so hang <laughs> with me on the stage here and uh, pleasure let me let me remind all our viewers that if you're ready to wake up the champion in your chart today then you need milo with active go don't just wake up your chart but wake up the champion in your chart with milo with active go and other foods. Your child needs all the help they can get as they go through their daily activities. And Milo with Active Go contains the natural goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa with vitamins B2, B3, B6, B12, C, and D, plus also minerals, iron, calcium, and phosphorus. Energize your child with a nourishing cup of Milo every day. Milo, the energy to go further. Now, one more thing let's remind you of. Come and be blown away by the five course menu of uh, guest chefs series happening at the mix from the 31st of august to the 3rd of september the branch menu is on september 4 2022 so come and be blown away some of our you know on thursdays we have a lot of chefs on the stage and some of our chefs are in that uh, that competition there if you want to call it that so uh, if you want a five course i had a seven course meal two weeks ago I was really full. Five course would do well for you as well. It's at the Mix Restaurant in Osu, the Mix GH, from the 31st of August to the 3rd of September. You want the brunch menu, that will be on the 4th of September. Before I let you go, let me ask you this. How do students, especially girls in rural communities with limited resources, engage in the STEM project? Um, that's a good question. So that is why uh, we we at Open Labs, especially when it comes to technology training, we made sure that mm. they get all the facilities um, mm. in place. So every student who comes to enroll, they get their own computers to work with. So they need not to worry about. Um, you you provide the the facilities the for facilities, them to work with exactly. once once they can make it in once they can make exactly. it into the program. Apart from that, there is an online offline and online learning management system which they can enroll into, mm -hmm. uh, which they will get registered into, so they can make use of the courses when even when they are at home. Absolutely. Uh, what will be your 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 final words on technology in general before you before you go? My final words to the African youth is that grab every opportunity comes. Uh, near way because uh, I I'm seeing that this generation of uh, African this generation is particularly blessed the reason being the whole world is looking at the growth of African youth mm. there are a lot of opportunities and scholarship coming China is coming to the end of working population the working population of China is coming to an end now the whole world is what, focusing. Does, what does that mean the working population what do you mean the working population of China is coming to an end because the, the youth or the young population of China uh, is, is coming to an end because, uh, you know, China has come to a policy of one child at a home. Oh, yeah. That they did that for a while. Back, yeah. yeah. So now the working population of China or the youth population of China is uh, reducing. reducing. And really? now the whole world is focusing on uh, Africa because the youth population is here. Are you that so oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So does this one child <laughs> policy thing affect the... It it may or it may not because their population has come to a. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. It's hard to comment on that. Uh, uh, but yeah, to the African youth, this is what I wanted to say: um, stop going behind betting or other way of making quick money. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, African youth and uh, people of Accra will be really happy with this advice. But they're like betting on the weekend. Is, yeah. is the main job <laughs> exactly so they should invest their time on creating something uh, impactful okay. um, so that's what my advice is all about okay all right so Jith, i'm not going to mention your last name the second time thank you so <laughs> <laughs> pleasure is mine bro. <laughs> thank you so thank much you for so coming much. to see us and uh, sure. all the best with with with, with the program and uh, i hope 
uh, within the with the next couple of days uh, a lot of